Hey guys, welcome back to Carl's Orchids, my Orchid channel. And it's um, been sporadical updates and uploads uh, lately, but it's because my apartment looks like what's written on my t shirt drama, real huge drama. Um, I'm still waiting for my furniture to arrive so I can have a proper uh, table to um, film on. And do some read parts on and stuff. Um, <laughs> this bench is really my new aquarium bench. So it's still a little bit of a mess, but that doesn't stop me, which shall not stop me from filming. Um, so today we're just gonna look uh, at a little bit of this and that, I think, and um, with a bit focus on my Cadizanid type orchids. So, and um, in my last video, my Spike and Bloom video, I was focusing a little bit on uh, my scale problem about half of my collection, especially the Cattleyas. Yeah, I has got it, so to speak. And since I live in, uh, in such a small apartment with restricted areas, yeah, you know, the orchid addiction. We always want some more and some new fresh orchids. And yeah, it's logical that they will be squeezed in a little bit too tight to watch each other. So. The leaves will work as a bridge for the little scale, so to move over directly to the next one, to the neighbor plant. But what I want to show you with this guy, this is a nice plant from um, Grow Reshna from the summer of 20, RTH Chief Sweet Orange. It never bloomed for me yet, but I've only got this one for one year now, so uh, well, I better be a bit patient. Um, but you can see. Its latest cane is quite tall, a bit heavier than the other ones, the previous ones. And um, yeah. yeah, it holds something. It's uh, at the beginning of a bud in here. A little bit uh, more filled up than the other one, the previous one was. So this one didn't develop. So let's hope for this one. And um, this orchid I sprayed with uh, leaf gloss, or I don't know what it's called in English, but I. Leaf shine, leaf gloss, it's uh, mostly for the looks, to make the leaves shinier and to prevent dust to stick to the leaves for any length of time. I will show you the, um, the bottle. Yeah, this is a brand I used, Nelson Garden. Looks like this, with a monster on, uh, on the cover. <laughs> Lord Lance, leaf shine, leaf gloss, I don't know. <laughs> But, yeah, I guess you've all seen this one. Uh, when you spray it towards the plant, you need to be a little bit further away, about this far away, 40, 50 centimeters away from the plant. So this freezing uh, properties. The spray freezes the leaves a little bit, makes them a little bit cold and can cause some damage to leaves if you spray it close up towards the leaves. The insects, say they don't really seem to like the... Uh, the smell of it, it smells like, um, yeah, really terrible, even for us humans, so, but it did the trick. The leaves are still shiny after five weeks, I think, and the scale is not there anymore. Not even to the base of the canes. So, it's the best treatment I tried out this far, and, it, yeah, it does the trick. At least for a while. Uh, five weeks is a long time. The other pesticides I've used only worked for about two weeks and then I have to spray it all over again and yeah and after a while the plants get used to the treatment and the scales get um, more resilient to it. So let's hope for this treatment for a while shall we? This one is doing great now. And I also sprayed this one. It's a uh, Cattleya hybrid with spots on, uh, a little bit, uh, <laughs> yeah, the spotted uh, white and um, purple Cattleya types. Really, really lovely blooms. I'm waiting for it to bloom <laughs> and to finally fill up something in this sheath, but it's been there for a while now. So, well, last time it bloomed, or should I say the first time I got it, uh, it, it arrived in bloom in December. So perhaps it will fill up this one or probably um, a new sheath in this one but um, it's been sprayed I think about five weeks ago as well and it's also sitting in bark and the scales seem to be uh, liking 
the uh, orchid setting in bark a little bit better than the one setting in uh, semi hydroponics. Uh, since the semi hydroponics it's a little bit too damp for them. Damp at atmosphere around the base of the cane's eye, assume. Uh, they seem to stay away from the plants that has got a well filled water reservoir to the bottom. Yeah, yeah. So you can see here, no scale for five weeks. And uh, this new cane has got enough energy to grow to a, a uh, good size cane now, almost the size of the previous one. And the second new one is also coming on nicely. And um, yeah, this is a good plot now, really good. So, and what else do I want to show you today? <laughs> Stay. <laughs> This is the uh, Encyclia Prismatocarpa. Let's see if we can focus a bit. It's really close up now. <laughs> well, it turned out to be a good spike. Uh, still one or two buds to open up, but uh, look at it. It managed after almost two months trying to open up its blooms, but it managed as I got rid of most of the, uh, the little uh, bastards from each and every bud every one of them and we're gonna look forward to this lovely spike as well it's already up here so only three centimeters left and then the sheath will burst so it's gonna be a long blooming and one day when this spike has uh, finally finished its blooming I will spray this orchid with um, leaf shine as well but not when, when it's in full bloom uh, I wouldn't want to risk the uh, the blooms. Uh, it looks quite all right. The lovely blooms, I think. And this is also an example of a success. Uh, this is my um, orchid that I showed you um, quite recently. I think it's what my a, a couple of videos ago. Yeah, RLC CM White the best. A uh, swear to purchase from last year, and it was all covered with scale so much that I decided to transition it into semi-hydro just to see if there was going to be any changes to the better and well I can certainly see that there has been progress look it's new roots well perhaps not this one but <laughs> are going down now and another new growth here coming out and yeah some dead roots of course but it still looks quite plump and the leaves aren't wrinkly and best of all no scale keep in mind that this one is a quite recent transition and I do believe or shall we say yeah I, I do remember that I sprayed it but I'm not sure that I sprayed it with leaf shine no I no, I didn't. I didn't spray it with leaf shine. I didn't. But as you can see, not much scale left. A little, little thing down, uh, back here to the back side of the leaf, but that's just about it. It's, um, it's clean to the base now. Um, I've been um, stepping away from my routine and I didn't flush it. I, I filled up the water reservoir in this case from the start so usually when I transition an orchid with lots of roots I I would like the roots to adapt to the new media and the little bit more damp environment but uh, uh, so I, I treat it as a uh, regular cattleya and uh, flush it and let it dry out to keep the um, wet and dry cycle but not in this case but so the roots are dead now I could have saved a few, I guess, with that method, but I, I wanted to get rid of the scale, so I needed the, uh, <laughs> the really water evaporation properties from the lecker better than keeping the roots, as I knew that there were some new roots coming out on the way. So, yeah, I think it's a success, and now it's about time for me to spray it with leaf shine, leaf gloss, yay, today. Now, as a matter of fact... So I guess I finally found a solution that can work for a while until I get rid of the, the little creatures for good. Yeah. 
And what else have we got? Yay, a cat type orchid. What can it be? It's my Moniara. <laughs> it's a mouthful word. Monia or whatever. Millennium Magic Witchcraft. Yeah, an awarded plant. I got it from Swarte in uh, March this year. March 24, yeah, to be exact. And what I did, I lifted up from its... Um, from its, uh, the part it arrived in, the small one, and I just uh, put a layer of sphagnum moss around it and pressed it down into a little bit um, wider and higher pot, this nine centimeter pot. And that's just about all I did. Its new growth was about halfway up here. It's a good plant. The last year's pseudobulb was quite heavy and nice and plump when I got it. And they had already started to water it when I when it arrived. So I just continued watering it and fertilizing it. So let's see what we got. Yeah, little, little, little uh, nubbin, <laughs> shall we say? That's a good word. <laughs> Nobody understands it, but it's a good word. A couple of nubbins could be a beginning of, yeah, spikes. But I think this one produces spikes from the leaf joints. But I guess it can produce a spike from <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> yeah. And two months ago, it uh, started on another new growth down here, too. <laughs> this one is most certainly the oldest pseudobulb of them all. So this one is not going to be uh, <laughs> a great pseudobulb, but, uh, but at least a few roots. And, yeah, the roots are coming out from the bottom, as I wanted them to do, and into this mug. This, uh, s yeah, as I call it, semi-water culture. <laughs> I like this method. Um, yeah. So, now, this latest, uh, shall we say, latest pseudobulb is a bit taller now than its previous one, and that's a good sign. So, I will keep on fertilizing this one quite heavily for about September. Yeah, yeah about for one more month, I guess, yeah. And then I will reduce the fertilizer and the watering. So this one is quite early, as you saw, already March, this high pseudobulb. So this one will go dormant before the, the other ones. But I do believe that this one needs a trickle of water, even during dormancy. Yeah. But you can see here, it's got um, a lot of algae to the top layer. And the algae is eating up the nutrients, so I will remove the uh, top layer here. Should have done this a long time ago, I just forgot. So, now I can do it instead. If I place a layer of, shall we say, coconut husk fiber, or another layer of uh, sphagnum moss on top here, I will kill off the algae and there will be some uh, bad stuff going on to the media underneath. So, we just do it like this. And I will place a bit of coconut husk fiber chips on top. So, the algae won't get in the sun anymore. And it will be better for the plant. For the nutrition. Yeah. So, now he's all set for this late mid-season. I should have recorded this one uh, one month ago, but as I said, <laughs> nowhere to film. All a mess. And this one, yay, it's a gorgeous one. It's my Fred Clark Yara, After Dark Black Pearl. I had it for three years, I think, three or four years, and it's been blooming for me once from this fat pseudobulb. But it's getting soft here. And it's going to rot a bit, but that's normal. And this one is also rotting off here. I can just remove it. Yeah, it's, um, it's a normal behavior. But look, let's see what we got. Yeah, now it's nothing. All right. But this year's growth is it's a beautiful one. And it's, yeah, 
it reached the size of the previous years. A little bit taller, as a matter of fact, and about the same size as the cane from the year before. So, well, well, it's not really progressing, but it's staying the same. It's okay. Yeah, it's not going downhill, and and it's fat and lovely. So I think this pseudobulb has got potential blooming this year. We shall see. I switched rooms for this one and growing area, so maybe he likes it better in here and will show us some blooms this year or next year. In, it blooms um, December, January, if it's going to keep his schedule, <laughs> that is. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, but no, um, no spider mice this year. This leaf gloss works perfectly well for spider mites as well. Keep them away. Yeah, it's a good plant. Let's hope for some blooms. I can make a link to my care collab on this guy. My Fred Clark Chiara After Dark Black Perm. So here's another Catacidna type orchid. And it's the uh, Saccadum species. Uh, I got it from a guy uh, called Ills. On eBay a couple of years ago, and well, it did grow taller than this <laughs> the last couple of years. But I split it and gave away half of the plant to a member in my orchid society, a guy who really loves growing uh, Kedisani type orchids, and it does it really well as well. So I figured, yeah, why not? This one was growing really tall, and it did bloom for me with female flowers. They look really spectacular little bit like uh, green bells <laughs> so I I thought it was quite okay and I want to add a little bit of this coconut husk fiber chips on top of it as well yes and um, yeah it, um, of course it reached the size of its previous cane and a little bit more as a matter of fact so um, <laughs> but for me <laughs> this one is quite small if you compare it to the uh, the other division I gave away so so, well, I should be um, happy with this progress. <laughs> not sad, so, yeah, be happy, Karin, okay? This is good progress. <laughs> but not what I'm used to be seeing on this guy, so. Cicardum, really nice. Uh, nothing bad to the leaves, really, not much, no. And I have another one, a really good grower from uh, Orchid Garden. It's a uh, Cetacidum sanguineum. It's a species as well. It looks like a little uh, owl, I think. Um, <laughs> a little little monster. Really spectacular, crazy looking blooms. And that's why I got it. It looked so crazy and cute uh, at the same time. So I just had to have it. And uh, it turned out to be a nice grower. When I got it, it had one pseudobulb. I think uh, perhaps um, this one or yeah, another one that's gone now. But um, this size. And it's been progressing for each year. And I know that this one will grow on. It's suitable will grow on really well at a fast speed in September, October. So I will have to keep on fertilizing this guy heavily for yet another two months' time. Look at his root growth. It's quite okay. And this little reservoir to the bottom. Yeah? But I think this specimen will have to be um, become a large one, a large specimen before it's able to bloom. This is going to be a large guy and this one will stay. It definitely will stay. And here another one. Let's see what it is. Um, yeah, <laughs> the mislabeled one. Um, Cloesia dotsonianitsis. And I think I got it from um, Elsner, I think. But they were nice. The blooms were nice. And I gave away the uh, second division. So, this one's progress is not as good as the other one, the previous one. I'll just show you, uh, as you can see. So, and uh, it had a little bit of spider mites. But I sprayed it now. So, more fertilizer for yet another month's time. And it will progress next year, I think. Yeah, and this one really came on strong this year. It's my um, Catacidum Charles Worth times Catacidum Ornitoides. It's, um, I divided this one 
in order to give away one division, but uh, <laughs> I think I changed my mind or, or so. Um, I put them together again to save some space and uh, yeah, this, this one has been growing on nicely. Taller than the cane it uh, came out from, as well as this one, it's even better in comparison. It's a heavy grower and it will sti uh, still grow a bit more. So, and water reservoir, of course. Good root system. My Tennessee types that I kept. And this is an orchid I tried out two times, I think. Uh, this is my second attempt on a Trichopelia. And this one's called Trichopelia coccinea times suavis. Yeah, it, um, it's new pseudobulbs. It's been producing um, quite many since I got it. Uh, one year ago, I guess it was. Um, I mean, they're turning yellow, some of them. And, yeah, well, they're not doing as good as I would like them to do. This new pseudobulb is okay, but, and this little one has managed. And another one coming, another one coming here, another one coming there. But, well, it's not doing great, and I never repotted it. It's been sitting in uh, the media it arrived in. Because I didn't dare to uh, report it, I, I knew too little about it, and the information you can find on it on the internet is uh, quite confusing, I think. Uh, it's nothing for you home growers, <laughs> windowsill growers really, hot to cool growers, a little bit dry rest, winter rest and stuff. So, but I got it and I have to do my very best with it. Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of the, uh, the ah look some new roots. That's great. Yeah, it smells like um oh yeah a walk in the um in the woods in a damp wood. So I would try out semi hydroponics for this guy. Uh, he doesn't like it the way it is so. As I said earlier, the ones that are used to be sitting in uh, damp media, water retentive media such as uh, this um, moss, are um, faster um, adjusted to uh, being transitioned. Yet they um, they adapt faster. That what that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> Okay, um, I would just um, flush this one a bit and get back. Well, I decided that this little pot will be great for it. It's a nine centimeter pot. Check the root system. It was quite all right, a good root system. I mean, not so many dead roots uh, at all. Yeah, I think it's perfect for it. And there will be some new ones when this next growth here comes out, so. Maybe not really the season, but it's not doing great anyway, so it doesn't matter. Fill it up with some lacquer beads, medium size, and some charcoal. Not all the way to the bottom, I think. Whoa, it's falling under my aquarium somewhere. <laughs> my new one. Oh, I cannot wait until I get all settled again. Have a nice setup and nice order at home again. All right, yeah, nothing more, nothing less. She's all set. <laughs> yeah, and done. takes about one or two minutes <laughs> really fast yeah I place her with the backside a little bit more to the, yeah, the oldest part a little bit more to the backside uh, even though she can put out new growth from basically anywhere so okay see if there's anything to stake give her some more balance 
Hmm, perhaps this middle cane. This fat one. Yeah, just a little bit. And the little tag to the back side here. And I would try to flush this one every once in a while. So I can get the uh, roots adjusted before I fill up the reservoir. Um, and some gray wool on top. Let me just see if I can find it somewhere. <laughs> There's stuff lying about everywhere here. So, yeah. But some gray wool on top. Okay, and now, now we've been doing repots, looking at some catacinid types. Looking a little bit up uh, on pests and stuff, and um, I would like to show you something nice, nicer. Come along. Look at her, my Bulbophyllum Medusae. So lovely. And the fringes or hair, so what it's called, um, are much longer this time, this blooming. So the more mature this plant gets, the longer the uh, hairs. <laughs> Oh well, will be. And that also goes for the spike. Last year's spike it was only about a couple of centimeters long, the stem of the spike, I think, uh, if I remember it correctly. And the bloom itself was a little bit more shaped like a little, um, little knot, <laughs> hairy knot. So this is a much better bloom, blooming, shall we say. Two blooms with long hairs. And in a couple of years, this one can give you and me, us, a lovely show. Many blooms at the same time. And it doesn't smell bad either. It doesn't smell anything. It doesn't have a scent at all. So that's a really good thing. And uh, what else up here? Well, it's quite dark. Uh, but it is my um, Kaiser Slimming Hay. Yeah, it's growing on really nicely as well. Anyway, I think... Well, no, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> My Maxillaria tenifolia. Such a gorgeous plant. And um, at first I thought it would uh, reject the uh, transition a bit. But it's coming on nicely now. Again, beautiful large one. I've never seen such a large specimen before. Lovely. This top shelf. And my Tolumnius are also sitting there. The corn. Well, until I see you next time. It is going to be on September 11 or not. Or earlier, perhaps. Um, there's going to be a care collab on uh, September 11. So, and if we don't see each other until then, have a lovely, lovely week and weekend and such. And uh, yeah. Thank you so much for watching and take care. Bye bye guys.